Well, from state to national politics, we now have our political analyst who's going to be joining us in the studio in just a few seconds. What are we talking about? Well, Governor Andrew Cuomo, he agreed to, Demo uh, I should say, to debate Democratic challenger Cynthia Nixon. What does that actually mean for upcoming primary elections? Well, we'll let you know. And then also, the scandals coming from President Trump's administration to the Manafort trial, Omarosa's recording, and the Cohen investigation. The question is, what does this all mean? Joining us now in our studio, political analyst Lee Bynes. And, uh, I mean, you can't have more stuff to talk about than, I mean, we can keep you the, here the whole the, the plate is full. The it plate is. is full. Let's go right at it. First of all, let's talk on the local side. Okay. Uh, Governor Cuomo now agreeing to debate Cynthia Nixon. He said he wasn't going to debate originally, didn't concede to any debates. Is this a sign that... Uh, the Cuomo campaign is weakening. What should we take from this? Well, you know what? Her numbers aren't necessarily moving up. He's got a ton of dough in his coffers. Uh, she's got very, very little. However, uh, if you look back at what happened to uh, Crowley uh, against uh, Alexandria uh, Cortez, mm -hmm. uh, he refused to debate, and he took her too lightly, and now he's headed for the wings. So I think uh, Cuomo uh, uh, realized that this person, Cynthia Nixon, uh, has got some chops. She's got a message. Uh, she's got a message that's leaning left, and she's pulling him further to the left. Uh, just uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact, the young man, uh, the brother of the young man who's, who died in, um, in uh, Rikers Island uh, via uh, suicide because he had been there for three years, hadn't, been, proud, given right? a hadn't been given a trial. Well, uh, his brother is deciding to, to, uh, to back Cynthia Nixon simply because of the fact that, uh, well, Cuomo failed to uh, uh, get bail reform underway as he promised but she's also uh, going to cause him some problems if he doesn't shape up very very quickly because i was doing some research and found that uh, as a matter of fact uh, poverty is is uh, at an all-time high in new york state overall but not only uh, poverty but uh, new york state actually has the highest um, level of income inequality in the country of all 50 states new york is 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 pretty much the worst. Now he's been here for eight two terms. That's eight years. But you also have and people he has to close the gap. Not to cut you off, but you have some people who say, "Listen, you've got New York, right? And you've got a, New York City uh, has, of course, the biggest. You've got millions of people here. There's a big in, in income equality gap. How much do you attribute that as a realistic statistic, given the fact that you've got so many people living across the five boroughs, which a lot of these numbers, statistics-wise, they're saying." Is where this comes from. Well, that that definitely does have a, a substantial impact. But we also talking about upstate New York. He is the he is the governor for the entire state of New York. And when you go up to, into places, well, where you hail from, in Syracuse and Buffalo, uh, upstate New York, where I have a little property in, in Dutchess County. Those people, I was up there a couple of weeks ago, and I, I was looking around. And it doesn't look as nice as it did. 10 years ago. There's a lot of people suffering. If you go down to Poughkeepsie and you're looking at uh, the opiate problem there, you can see that with your eyes visually. So there's a lot of people who have lost their homes, struggling to keep their homes, struggling with uh, two jobs to make earn enough money to, to keep their family um, uh, uh, fed. Uh, I was also looking, at, again, at the income and quality uh, situation here, specifically in New York City. And it, in order to, to live to have a living wage, it takes $27 an hour for a family, a, 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 a family of two. Mm -hmm. You need at a minimum. Most people in New York, a, a vast majority of them are making far less than uh, $27 an hour. It is a dream. So uh, I'm interested in this, uh, in this uh, uh, debate that's coming up because I'd like to see how um, Cynthia uh, Nixon mm -hmm. handles herself in that confrontation, and it's going to be one. Talking about New York State, let's push a little bit further and go down, uh, go down and take a shuttle down to D.C. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, uh, President Trump in upstate New York this week, uh, stumping in Fort Drum as well as up in Utica uh, for Congresswoman Claudia Tinney. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people are saying that uh, given the fact that he's got this latest, you got the trial that's going on, and now you have the Omarosa tapes, and mm -hmm. some people are now dubbing these the tapes of wrath. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at this situation, how much do you think this is going to have an impact come midterm election? I, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be huge because uh, Nancy Pelosi, whom I'm no big fan of, uh, pretty much uh, labeled his uh, administration a culture of corruption. So I took a look over the last uh, few months to see what was happening. What was happening? As a matter of fact, when we were on the, on this this very set last week, as we were having our conversation, uh, the person who actually announced uh, um, uh, Donald Trump uh, to the Republican Party was um, Chris Collins. At that very time, he was being arrested on uh, charges of insider trading. 
And if I, when I started looking at the list, as of this day, today, Paul Manafort's trial is going into, uh, they're going to be uh, uh, wrapping up. His defense was so weak, they didn't even um, put up any witnesses. They just went straight to closing arguments. There's a good chance that he's going to be facing a conviction, if not here, in the next trial that follows up in a couple of weeks. We got Rick Gates. We got Michael Cohen. We got Michael Flynn. We got Scott Pruitt. We got uh, Bob Porter. These are lesser names, but these guys were... Uh, uh, went down because of uh, domestic abuse. We got David Sorensen, another one. He was a White House speechwriter, went down because of domestic abuse. And then we got um, uh, uh, Wilbur Ross, which I'm going to say for when I return because that's premium content, but he's looking at uh, uh, ethics investigations as well. So when we get to Omarosa and you add up all of these, these, these issues together, it does say that there's a culture of co corruption going on. And those tapes, uh, even though that she's not one that can normally be trusted, because I took a random sampling of a lot of people last night to see who was uh, supporting her, very few people had anything positive to say, but she did keep the receipts. And having those tapes to be able to, to because again, she, by her, her account, Everybody in that administration yeah, but, but is But the question is, is how, how much do you give credence to this? I mean, you understand that she worked in the White House. Mm -hmm. If she wasn't fired, she'd still be working there. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you say, hey, would you be as vocal? Would you be saying what you're saying when you've been complicit for years? And in the hearts and minds of many Americans, it just looks like a fraud. And it's like, bye, girl. You know what? Up until a point. But she's got the tape. And as long as she has something out there to dangle in front of uh, uh, the administration, they're going to be very, very uh, cool in terms of how they approach her. Now, they are coming after her legally with, the, with the, um, uh, some, some charges because she broke what they're saying, that she signed a uh, uh, non-disclosure agreement. But uh, that's not necessarily enforceable in the real world. And uh, she's also indicating that not only has she already been spoken to by the Mueller investigators, but she's willing to, to, to come back. Now, if she's, if she's, that, if she's that confident, that she, those extra tapes that she's threatening th to have will make some uh, interesting listening to by uh, the Mueller investigation. They're being called the Tapes of Wrath. We'll continue to follow that lead. That's all the time we have. Of course, next week you come on back and bring us some more. That's the plan. All righty. Lee Bynes, our political analyst here on open. Listen, stay with us. We got more show coming up. We'll be right back. Wrap this.